It's okay. Good morning. Uh, so we have gathered here uh, here for our second uh, class. Okay. So last week uh, we have seen chapter one. Okay. So we have seen chapter one. So I think we have completed. Okay. With the examples that I have given. Okay, so I think at the end of the lecture last week, I couldn't uh, manage to finish all the examples, but I give you a video. Okay, video of all the four examples. Okay, are you thinking of that? So I hope you, you see lah. Okay, so university life, I think you all know. I think you have been here for one one year, and uh, you have known that. So this is not like a school. Okay, so dekat sekolah kita ada jadual waktu so Kita follow exactly Then cikgu akan ajar semua Okay, so like lectures So we will guide We will give you the important parts All the notes kita bagi But it's back to your effort Okay, back to your effort Whether you want to learn or not Okay So material saya bagi kan Lecture notes semua saya dah bagi Okay Siap saya ada Buat inisiatif saya record Class and upload. Okay, in case you cannot follow up, uh, you cannot follow my class. Uh, you are a bit like cannot farm a lot of stuff. Uh, you boleh mm-hmm. boleh dengar balik. So you don't. I never expect you to listen back two hours. Okay, two hours of uh, my lecture video. You have to extra guide. Okay, so you, maybe uh, the beginning part you understand. In between you don't understand. Uh, so you pergi tengok lah yang bagian tu. Okay, so I give you a add puzzle assignment. So dalam tu ada soalan. So soalan tu tak ada, uh, it's out of the box question. Uh, tak ada dalam lecture. Uh, maybe I explain dalam lecture. Uh, then you need to go and find something extra. Uh, so that's how you learn. Okay, uh, apart from all the materials that I have given. So you also have all the YouTube videos, extra YouTube videos yang available publicly. So you can go and uh, listen back Okay uh, Because I say this subject is uh, Theory Okay theory subject Theory subject maksudnya Dia tak ada banyak calculation Calculation ada lah sikit Tapi it's more uh, Go back to fundamentals Okay fundamentals uh, So you need to uh, Go and check yourself Okay a lot of fundamental videos Animations Untuk you faham Better Okay Uh, then uh, last week I have given you uh, Sorry The previous week we covered chapter 1 Last week we covered chapter 2 Part 1 Okay then part 2 saya bagi Saya bagi um, Add puzzle video Okay add puzzle video and in your Google classroom you can see that I also uploaded The YouTube video Of the add puzzle Okay So add puzzle ni dia ada kekangan sikit sebab I letak cannot skip So you dengar-dengar-dengar Tiba-tiba ada soalan You kena answer soalan tu Okay you kena answer soalan tu baru you, video tu boleh continue So maybe uh, the, the question that I ask in the add puzzle Is related Related uh, then you cannot understand From the add puzzle video itself So you boleh pergi ke uh, YouTube video You listen balik the same video Okay So that you boleh answer Okay saya so tengok add puzzle uh, Assignment punya answer uh, So agak uh, Very very short you, you are answering like very short And very general uh, So memang lah Kalau you nak dengar video tu habis You just letak je apa-apa answer kan So but I will evaluate the answers Okay so make sure you answer Uh, berdasarkan technical okay, Technical terms Use the uh, correct term Jangan letak general Okay So I think I, I, I ada tengok juga few answer So how to increase the water pressure So buka pipe lebih Betul lah uh, Tapi it's not something related to this subject So whatever answer that you give So not only in your assignments So not only in your test or exam Everything must be related to thermal fluid Okay, yang tu you kena fikir So don't give in a general Lehman term so, Kita panggil as a Lehman term Maksudnya uh, Understanding of orang awam 
okay so you are engineer you always portray yourself as an engineer so you try to answer as an engineer okay cuba bayangkan okay maybe dekat kelas you answer macam tu tapi kalau you pergi ke industri so in front of orang putih okay let's say you are working in MNC company let's say Intel lah teramai senior-senior you dekat Intel Infineon semua kan so let's say you are having this kind of uh, technical talk with other engineers from other country so you cakap oh kalau nak increase the water pressure buka pipe ha, so cuba bayangkan what they will think kan so try to portray yourself so jangan memang akan ada self low self esteem lah especially when it's a rel- related to communication so maybe you cannot uh, like communicate well in english it's okay you try to answer as much as possible okay so that's what i expect from you okay uh, part 2 chapter 2 part 2 i bagi at puzzle video and we will have a discussion on that okay i'm not really co- I'm going to cover the old chapter part 2 lah part 1 saya cover dalam lecture okay so every wednesday not every wednesday when we have we have a, a puzzle video we will have a discussion okay one hour okay i think uh, the 45 minutes so we kita akan discuss the important parts i takkan cover the whole thing okay kalau you nak the whole thing you tanya soalan i will try to explain tapi dalam ad puzzle ada 6 soalan so 6 soalan tu kita akan discuss during the discussion okay at least kita ada some question for us to discuss okay apart from that if you have other question okay maybe uh, apart from the six question tu so you boleh tanya you boleh tanya i will try to explain okay i will try to explain okay so discussion okay i think before we go to the discussion slide i will try to explain uh, certain things lah okay wait Okay, so ini adalah lecture note Okay, for chapter 2, part 2 Okay, I believe you already printed And you are having with you Okay, so I can just go through Glance through uh, Some of the important stuff Okay, so as I said last week So give more emphasis For the the one that I highlighted, kalau ada lah Highlighted macam ni, kan Ada warna kuning, so try to understand Whatever is discussed there Because that's the key point, okay Um, okay, so last week we have uh, understood about viscosity. So some of the applications related to viscosity is a uh, viscometer. Okay, ini adalah viscometer. So if you can see, okay, uh, in the middle. So that's the device that measure visco. Viscosity uh, is measured using a viscometer. Okay, so uh, viscometer dia ada dua bahagian Satu yang bahagian yang boleh pusing Okay, in between Okay, so you can see at the left hand side Rotating drum Okay, rotating drum dia akan pusing Okay, and at the side you put the the liquid or the fluid That you want to measure Okay, and the rotating drum will rotate And you will have a stationary cup Okay, in between And when the motor rotates, uh, they will uh, measure the viscosity. Okay, cuba bayangkan. So, uh, you, you ada satu cup and in between you have a rotating drum and you put the liquid. So, katakan you masukkan minyak. So, you, you nak measure the viscosity of that particular oil. Okay, so you pour the oil in, inside. Okay. So, you pour the oil inside. Okay, then you have a rotating uh, drum is connected to drive motor, so it will start to rotate. So waktu rotate tu, uh, you you will have uh, two parts. Okay, so as you can see here, okay, so this is your liquid. Okay, so the part that uh, the molecules, the oil molecules that is attached to the drum, it will start to move. Uh, yang ni dia kurang lah, tapi yang ni dia akan pusing lebih because of tangential force. 
ok. So, when it rotates, so it will try to measure uh, all the viscosity, viscosity and all the parameters involved. Ok, so these are some of the formulas that involve. Ok, so try to write down macam I beritahu last week. So, if you want to answer questions, better you write down all the formulas separately. Ok, so you can refer. You can refer to all the formulas without looking at your lecture note. Ok, so I, I have given you assignment 1. Ok, so yang ni nanti saya, uh, saya akan create uh, assignment 1 in your Google Classroom so that you boleh buat submission. So, normally I will give 2 weeks. Ok, 2 weeks untuk 2 soalan je. So, one week dua, buat satu soalan Jangan last minute I think students like I bagi dua minggu ke dua bulan ke The last night baru you akan buat kan Okay jangan lah I think it's a quite simple question je Even I give you the answer Answer for you to check Okay so answer for you to check Pastikan you dapat Until uh, You get the answer Okay so assignment 1 question 1 Okay, and assignment 1, question 2. Okay, so it is given all the parameters involved. So, you just need to replace in this formula. Okay, so because ini ada banyak formula. So, try to use all this formula to... Uh, so, this is how you can calculate. Okay, uh, the top. Okay, so you can use all the formula based on the information given in the question. Okay, dalam soalan tu, you tengok informasi apa yang diberi ok, then you can uh, find the answer ok, so assignment 1, question 1 and question 2, I already given you the answer, please verify ok, then uh, there's a, a part, because we are studying about fluids and its properties ok, anything related to fluid and the measurements ok, another terms that you need to understand adalah surface tension ok, surface tension Maybe you pernah dengar capillary effect Ada Waktu fizik dulu Lupa dah Tak tahu lah waktu saya Belajar fizik dulu ada Okay capillary effect Okay so kalau you tak tahu apa tu Capillary effect try to google Okay but it's actually uh, A Kind of surface That develop above uh, uh, Liquid Ok, so kalau you tengok dekat sini Ok, gambar ni Ok, kenapa water droplet ni Dia boleh tunggu sampai uh, A point Then baru dia jatuh Sebab dia ada satu uh, Layer Satu layer on top of that Kita panggil as surface tension The surface tension is actually preventing The water droplet To drop until it become heavy Uh, sebab tu dia boleh tunggu kejap uh, And uh, serengga ni Okay normally it's a light weight So you boleh tengok atas Kalau you pergi ke tasik ke Ataupun uh, Sungai selalunya tak ada lah uh, A place where the water is not really moving So you can see a lot of bugs Okay serengga Dia uh, boleh boleh tengok lah dalam uh, Above the water surface uh, This kind of uh, insect So, apa yang dia buat, dia akan, dia akan stand on top of the water surface. So, macam mana dia boleh stand? Because that's, it's a lightweight. Okay, it's lightweight and uh, because of the surface tension, dia boleh, boleh berhenti. Uh, dia boleh stop on top. Okay, dia tak tenggelam. Okay, kalau you boleh, surface tension boleh, boleh tahan tak? Tak boleh kan? Sebab dia, kita ni berat. Uh, but, serangga, I think the weight is very less. So, the surface tension is actually uh, can hold the weight. Okay, then uh, uh, macam ni. So, you boleh try buat eksperimen ni. So, ambil one cup. So, try to gently place a paper clip on top. Ataupun uh, razor blade. Yang uh, apa, pisau cukur kan. Okay, bukan the the whole thing. Just the blade. Uh, so, jangan letak. Letak, then next week you come and tell me. So, I try. But your theory is wrong. Okay. So, ambil. Kalau wrong tu, ambil recording bagi, bagi dekat saya. Okay. So, so just ambil the blade. So, try to place gently. Okay. So, kalau you tak break the surface tension, the blade boleh terapung. Okay. Until you tekan. Kalau you tekan tu, dia akan tenggelam. Sebab dia berat. 
okay or you can uh, use a uh, paper clip okay something uh, that very like okay so the surface tension is actually like this okay so the molecules inside the water which is fully submerged it will have a pressure from outside uh, the force from outside okay semua so, bagian tapi dekat surface ni dia cuma ada dekat atas uh, uh, yang exposed to the air is not having any force Okay, so you have a bunch of molecules in the like this. So one, two, three, four. So in between the molecules, there will be an attraction. Okay, because of the attraction, they are both like a shield. Okay, it's forming like one shield, yang kita pagi as surface tension. Okay, so you, yang lain tu, you boleh baca lah di sini. Okay, so different different liquid having a different different surface tension. So which can be measured using Uh, Newton per meter square Ok, so boleh tengok uh, Table dekat sini Ok So I just cover the important parts Because it's just a discussion Ok, so if you want to measure The surface tension And also you want to investigate the capillary uh, Effect So you use a capillary tube Ok, so ini adalah satu capillary tube So biasanya Kalau you ada liquid So, katakan air, you suddenly want to put something, uh, any bekas ke, so you try to masukkan dalam air, so you boleh nampak, the level of the water will naik, okay, and it will form a meniscus, uh, ini adalah meniscus, uh, so meniscus is a curved surface, so it depends on the liquid, okay, liquid, uh, depends on the liquid, apa yang you letak, nah, kalau you letak mercury, dia akan terbalik, Uh, so dia ada satu term wetted and also non wetted okay uh, you boleh tengok in the next slides okay so this is how the capillary tube and uh, based on this the the liquid level will be increased by height each uh, dia akan naik lah sikit and uh, dia akan ada satu angle okay, angle yang kita boleh buat measurement okay so wetting fluid so wetting fluid is Uh, so uh, macam mana nak tahu wetting and non uh, non wetting fluid so you take uh, the angle between the surface of the container and also uh, yang ni dia you boleh tengok kan dia dia naik so you just sambungkan straight then you take the angle if the angle is less than 90 degrees uh, kurang daripada 90 darjah itu adalah wetting fluid Uh, kalau yang, yang ni You tengok dia macam curve ke bawah And you just tarik ke sini And you take from uh, From the Surface uh, So it's more than 90 degrees So kalau angle ni More than 90 degrees Itu adalah non wetting fluid uh, Kalau less than 90 degrees is a wetting fluid Okay itu je beza Okay, so uh, tadi kita tengok So if water and a similar kind of liquid Which is a wetting liquid uh, You akan nampak the height will increase Then dia akan form meniscus Tapi kalau uh, non wetting fluid Macam mercury You akan tengok the height will be decrease Height will be decrease and the meniscus will be curved down uh, So dia depends on the liquid The different types of liquid, they are the different properties. Okay, so vapor pressure. Okay, vapor pressure ni saya kena explain sikit. Okay, saya kena explain sikit. Sebab dia a bit that uh, against our misconception all the while. Okay. So, kalau you nak panaskan air. Okay. So, what is the temperature? Kalau... At the room te, uh, apa? Normal sea level atmosphere So kalau you nak panaskan air Selalunya takat didik dia Dekat uh, At what degree? 100 Kenapa 100? Yeah? Tak dengar Air kurang Okay so air kurang okay Tapi kenapa dia selalunya 100 100 degree Boleh tak dia kurang Ataupun lebih Tak boleh Boleh Kenapa uh, So 
So tu jawapan tu kena ada kenapa? Okey. Tak dengar. Cuba so, pakai mask kot. Boleh buka eh, janganlah buka. Ha, nanti anything happen dan tell so as to buka kan. Okey. So boleh tak kalau uh, temperature bawa bawa uh, 100 degree. So let's say 80 degree ataupun 70 degree atau belum temperature berapa? 30 degrees. Ha, kalau polis dia lebih sikit ha, Sebab panas kan ha, So katakan 35 degrees Boleh tak air itu didih dengan sendiri ha. Tapi kalau you buat any modification ha. So janganlah cakap Macam you answer dekat puzzle Berbuka the stuff ha. Memang memang betul Benda tu I tak boleh explain lah I tak boleh macam I cannot counter back ha. Tapi kalau you tengok dekat sini So there's a term called vapor pressure So vapor pressure Tekanan apa dalam bahasa Melayu lah Vapor Tekanan warp Ada ke term macam tu <tuh> Tak tahu lah The exact term dalam bahasa Melayu Saya tak berapa pasti Tapi dalam bahasa Inggeris Kita panggil as vapor pressure Okay So actually the water is boiling Not because of the temperature Saya uh, nak cuba explain lah Uh, air tu dia bukan mendidih disebabkan temperature. Temperature itu memang you bagi melalui any any form of heat lah. Tapi the the water will only uh, boil when the vapor pressure is achieved. Okay, not when the temperature is achieved. Faham tak? Uh, so temperature is actually bukannya berka, uh, uh, berkaitan terus. Is, the water is actually boiling Because the vape, vapor pressure is achieved Okay So kalau you boleh control vapor pressure ni uh, You boleh buatkan uh, The water to boil at any temperature uh, Boleh buat magic lah Nanti boleh buat magic dekat kawan-kawan Kan uh, So uh, you boleh baca dekat sini The yellow highlight uh, uh, Ini adalah some of the explanation lah Okay, so apa tu vapor pressure? The pressure at which liquid will boil. Ha, dekat mana uh, liquid? Okay, cecair itu akan men, uh, mendidih. So, that is what we call as a vapor pressure. Okay, so boleh tengok at the sea level atmospheric pressure. One atmosphere. Macam kita lah. Yang kita ada sekarang. Ha, kita selalunya takkan didih adalah at under degrees. Ha, selalunya kita uh, measure based on degrees. Tapi... In terms of vapor pressure So we can say that by increasing the temperature of the water at sea level to 100 degrees Celsius We increase the vapor pressure to a point at which it is equal to atmospheric pressure So the boiling occurs Okay So kalau you tengok uh, dekat sini The key point You increase the vapor pressure ni Ke satu atmospheric pressure Nah, uh, Maksudnya Um, dekat mana uh, Maybe you boleh ada dekat atas gunung Okay you boleh ada uh, Di bawah Sea level Okay maybe ada ada setengah kawasan dekat uh, Dunia ni So maybe dia bawah sea level Okay so di bawah sea level uh, So Dekat sana depends on the atmospheric pressure At that particular point uh, Kalau you boleh increase Ataupun decrease the vapor pressure To equals to one atmospheric pressure at that particular place, uh, air itu akan start mendidih. Faham tak? Okay, so you boleh tengok dekat sini example. Okay, so it is easy easy to visualize. Boiling can also occur in water at temperature much lower than under degrees if the pressure of the water is reduced to its vapor pressure. Okay, so dalam air itu dia ada pressure. So kalau pressure itu you boleh naikkan ataupun you boleh turunkan ke vapor pressure tu uh, Vapor pressure uh, pressure di mana uh, air akan mula mendidih So if you can control the pressure of the water to achieve that vapor pressure Air akan automatically uh, mendidih even at the room temperature uh, Faham tak? Okay so um, Ya, yeah, itu adalah Okay, so that that's the thing that uh, related to vapor pressure Okay Okay, so you can see here Cavitation 
so cavitation uh, okay so last paragraph uh, so uh, boiling of water that happened at very low pressure okay so vapor pressure adalah satu uh, level untuk air mendidih but if the boiling happens at very low pressure so maksudnya very low uh, compared to the other parts of the flowing the fluid flowing dia akan form a cavitation so cavitation dia selalunya macam ni uh, dia dalam bahasa kita dia cakap dia akan dia akan makan lah so dia akan makan the surface ok let's say you have a propeller uh, dia akan jadi macam ni cavitating propeller at the water tunnel uh, dia akan jadi, hasilkan macam ni lah so actually some part of the propeller dia akan keluar uh, dia akan keluar so dia dia lebih kurang macam mengakis lah ok it's like a uh, corrosion ok so ataupun uh, surface dia akan ada lubang-lubang-lubang macam ni uh, so indirectly your your propeller ataupun the surface akan damage ok so that is what we call as a cavitation ok then uh, compressibility apa tu compressibility uh, berapa Berapa banyak you boleh mampat sesuatu uh, fluid Dalam case ni fluid lah uh, Ataupun perpejal Okay any solid Okay so how much you boleh Okay antara solid, liquid dengan gas Yang mana lagi senang nak mampat Gas, gas. Sebab uh, So subjek ni You kena tahu sebab dia <laughs> So that is all Okay memang betul okay, Gas lagi senang nak mampat Tapi kenapa uh, Because Tak confident Nak jawab Nak, nak panggil hmm. ramai ke Ok so Betul lah So you boleh mampat gas tu Ok uh, Compared dengan perpejal Perpejal dia Volume dia Is like fix Ok and molecule Dekat dalam tu Memang dah Ada susuan padat Ok it's already well arranged So you, you don't have any Space in between Ok for you to compress Tapi gas The Uh, jarak antara satu molekul dengan satu lagi molekul jauh so in between ada free space uh, so you boleh mampat lah bagi dia dapat uh, so nanti you buka balik dia akan expand balik okay. so that's the nature of gas ok so compressibility is actually how much you can compress something ok so it can be a solid it can be a gas it can be a uh, liquid ok so selalunya kita akan measure based on E ataupun bulk modul, modulus elasticity, uh, elasticity. ok uh, so itu adalah unit untuk a measure ok so boleh baca dekat sini ok so compare dengan water and also air so uh, water at room temperature E the value of E is 2.2 to 10 to 10 to power of 9 ok so boleh uh, tengok So 10 to power of 9 besar ke 10 to power of 5 besar Matematik 10 to power of 9 ke Siapa cakap 10 to power of 9 ha? Siapa cakap 10 to power of 5 Tangkat juga Aduh Macam mana ni Kena panggil nama lah <laughs> Ok saya panggil nama yang adil Idina Ada Idina mana Eh mana Tadi ada 10 to power of 9 besar ke 10 to power of 5 Ramainya Idina <laughs> Boleh answer 5 ke 9 Confuse Sembilan ha. Sembilan besar lah okay. Sembilan lagi besar Cuma nombor dia pun besar kan Besar daripada lima okay. So 10 to power of 9 Is actually billion-billion ha. ha. Sekarang dia Tabu word Billion Terus masuk penjara okay. <laughs> So 10 to power of 9 So it's actually bigger than 10 to the power of 5 So maksudnya 
tadi you cakap antara water and also air yang mana lagi senang nak mampat air ha, udara lagi senang nak mampat tapi udara punya uh, value of E is 10 to power 5 so maksudnya kalau E lagi besar uh, maksudnya apa dia tak dapat mampat ok so meaning if the value of E is bigger so meaning is hard to compress if the value sorry if the value of E is smaller 10 to power of 5 dia senang nak mampat ok I, I think is one of the question lah dalam dalam add puzzle kan ok so that's uh, related to compressibility so that's the only thing that you need to know about compressibility so I tak suruh you kira so you just need to know kalau value of the E is smaller dia senang nak mampat kalau value of E is big so it's harder to be compressed Ha, selalunya benda ni student akan confuse terbalik ha, dalam exam kalau saya tanya tu dia akan cakap kalau value lagi besar senang nak mampat ha, so then you don't score marks lah ok uh, ok so this is another thing yang kita panggil as water emmer ok so water emmer so uh, let's say you have a continuous flow ok uh, ok yang ni dia sebelum the water flows ok so the valve is closed and the water is entering ok water is entering uh, then the water stay still maksudnya uh, sebab uh, injap ni tutup uh, the water is not moving ok and the water is not keep on coming uh, cuba bayangkan you ada pipe pipe dia tutup uh, then water tak masuk dari main pipe so apa akan jadi de de dekat pipe tu dia, dia tak akan jadi apa-apa kan Uh, because the water is not entering so tiba-tiba you buka pipe you buka pipe so water is flowing water is flowing so maksudnya dari main pipe water masuk uh, and uh, because your pipe is open so the water is keep on going tiba-tiba you tutup ah, ah. so kalau you tutup you marah katakan in future you ada anak anak tiba-tiba pergi tutup water is keep on flowing What will happen? Dalam ni Water is entering from the main pipe But here the valve is closed Apa akan jadi dekat pipe ni? Ha, pipe ni rosak One thing maybe the injap akan rosak Another thing the pipe akan rosak And it will cause water emmer Because the sudden stop Sudden stop in a flowing fluid ha, Especially kalau kalau main pipe pun you tutup uh, valve pun you tutup it's okay. but if the main pipe is not closed water is keep on entering and you close the sub uh, valve uh, then it will cause a water emmer so it's a serious problem lah dalam tumbuh fluid uh, because you want to replace uh, replace this thing so kalau benda kecil dia murah uh, tapi dalam industri so you normally have a bigger bigger stuff And if you want to do maintenance and you want to replace, it will cause a lot of problem. It will cost. Kalau industri ni, the favorite term of the employer, cost. Apa apa pun cost saving, cost saving, cost saving. Tapi kerja nak jalan. Okay, very hard lah life of engineers. Okay. So why do engineers are considered as cheap labor? Dalam industri. Sebab apa-apa pun panggil engineer Tapi kalau project success Oh manager Manager ambil nama I think that's happen everywhere kan uh, So that's the thing lah That's the real life situation of engineer Dalam industri So engineers Apa tugas kita okay, I think all of you are engineers ah. Huh? Okay uh, Bukan saya seorang sebab saya dah finish degree Oh tak So all of you are already there so, It's just like One year away Okay So Kenapa uh, Apa apa tugas engineer I think this is out of topic lah ini. Kita tak masuk lagi question Apa apa tugas utama engineer So what's the main Main work of engineer Tak dengar lah yeah? Maintenance Okay so part So engineer punya tugas adalah problem solver. Selesaikan masalah dalam industri. 
Okay, technical pun you kena solve Non-technical pun you kena solve Okay, so dekat industri Based on my experience lah Dulu I kerja dekat B Brown Industries in Penang So it's a Multi MNC Multinational company uh, Kalau you biasa dengar lah B Brown, selalunya ada juga I tengok sanitizer B Brown dekat sini uh, So I kerja dulu dekat, dekat Penang uh, So If you see, engineers they will call For solving the problem Apa-apa pun panggil, panggil engineer Engineer ni, engineer ni So, you as an engineer, you need to go And solve the particular problem Maybe on-site ke, ataupun off-site ke uh, Then Kalau The pro- a project is successful So uh, The manager will claim lah So, we manage, our team manage to solve Dia takkan bagi credit Dekat engineer, so If you expect credit, you are someone who expect credit, always uh, expect pujian, so that you are in the wrong job. <laughs> Because engineers, you will never be appreciated. Unless, until you receive one problem. Okay. Cuba bayangkan lah, macam ni lah. Uh, kan ada apa, dekat, dekat Shah Alam dulu, ada banjir. Apa? Seri muda kan? Uh, so, ada banjir. So, banjir sebab Kenapa? Apa 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 first 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 reason kenapa berlaku ni banjir? Terlalu banyak ya sebab engineer tak buat maintenance. Kan? Ah so kalau dah dapat solve ah, orang politik dapat nama kan? Ah samalah. So that's your your situation dekat industri nanti. Not to demoralize. Baik kita tugas kita solve the problem kita just solve and just move on. Okay, so that's one thing lah. Okay, so that's about this slide. Okay, so uh, we quickly check the questions. Okay, I will explain the question quickly. Okay, so what is the function of rotating drum in viscometer? Okay, actually I uh, explained lah tadi most of this thing. So, apa function rotating drum? So, rotating drum adalah benda yang dekat tengah ni. Apa tugas dia based on your understanding So you no need to tell, tell based on the slide Kenapa dia perlu rotate Kalau dia tak rotate You tak boleh hasilkan apa ha, Dia tak boleh hasilkan resistance betul Okay when you rotating something So you actually uh, Sebab uh, you boleh explain Okay, dalam dalam exam macam mana you nak explain? I bagi tahu. Depends on the marks given. Okay, kalau soalan tu soalan satu markah. So you can just uh, explain in one or two sentence. Tapi kalau uh, soalan tu tiga ke lima markah. So you can lukis, you can explain more. Okay, so that's how you normally you will score. So you don't expect you to just answer in one sentence. Then expect me, me to give five mark, okay? So that's not the way lah. Tapi uh, cara nak jawab dalam exam tu, ayah akan ajar waktu exam cleaning nanti, okay? How you can tackle. So for this case, uh, the function. So katakan yang ni adalah soalan lima marka, okay? So what is the function of rotating drum in viscometer, okay? So you can you kena bagi tahu gambar macam tadi lah, okay? Gam, uh, gambar tadi, sorry, I need to go back to the slide. Okay, so gambar ni So you have this So rotating drum ada dekat tengah-tengah Okay, it's in between Okay, you have a stationary cylinder dekat luar And you place the liquid inside Okay, liquid, uh, the fluid lah Okay, uh, normally for your visco Visco meter, you letak liquid Okay, so you tak boleh letak gas dalam ni uh, Because gas you tak boleh gunakan visco meter Okay, unless it's a special special viscometer to measure the viscosity of gas. Okay, uh, so what you do, you fill uh, yang warna pink ni adalah liquid. Okay, so you fill the liquid and when the, okay, so dalam liquid, dalam liquid ni ada apa? What you have in the liquid? So you have the liquid molecules. Uh, ada molecules kan? Uh, so, There will be two types of uh, 
once you already fill the container with a liquid so ada liquid yang stick dekat the stationary side ada ada setengah molekul dia akan stick dekat the the rotating part so when you are rotating this you actually moving it so the the molecules that stick to that rotate uh, rotating drum dia akan start to move yang jauh ni dia akan move sebab tu dia form this triangle ah so based on this moving and based on jarak dari sini ke sini you boleh buat uh, estimation of the viscosity okay so back to the question earlier Okay, what is the function of rotating drum? It's actually to create a resistance. Okay, resistance in order to measure the viscosity. Okay, so that's how you can an answer. Okay. Okay, yeah, I just uh, letak dalam mode ni. Eh. Boleh nampak sebelah sana? Okay, so kalau tak boleh nampak tu, I think you need to go a bit back. Because that slide pun is not connected. So, okay, so that second question. Okay, another five minutes. For your opinion, how surface tension can help in daily life? Ah. So, tadi I explain. Dalam lecture note, ada explanation what is surface tension. Ah. Tapi ini soalan out of the box. So, for your opinion, ah, selalunya out of the box question akan keluar dalam exam. Okay, akan keluar dalam exam. Okay, macam mana you nak jawab? For your opinion, how surface tension can help in daily life? Macam mana? Daily life. Ya. Yeah. Answer dia. Sa sa salah salah atau betul tu semua betul. Okey, semua betul. Okey, macam mana? Surface tension boleh help. This subject is uh, something interesting because it's science. Science is something around us kan. So you boleh always relate whatever you study with the real life. Apa yang you go through and uh, your 24 hours of life. Okey, so How surface tension can help? Uh, you tak boleh jadi serengga. You tak boleh jadi paper clip. So macam mana? Dia boleh help. Sabun, sabun. Sabun. Macam mana sabun? Dia jadi bubble, bubble. Okay, so maybe maybe bubble is used to clean your body. Macam tu ke? Ah, okay, betul. Okay, boleh lah. As long as it's acceptable, I still accept. Okay? It's a good try. Okay, thank you. Ada answer lagi? Okay, mula-mula kalau nak jawab soalan macam ni, based on your opinion, you kena tahu apa fungsi surface tension. Apa yang dia boleh buat and apa yang dia boleh prevent. Apa yang dia boleh buat? Apa yang dia boleh buat? So, dia boleh form satu layer on top of the liquid. Selalunya layer ni akan berguna waktu apa? You want to prevent something. Ah, huh? pain. Ah, uh, ataupun uh, you nak letak one layer of oil on top of your uh, of your uh, water so that insect will not go in. Ah, uh, so these are some of the thing lah. So you want to prevent uh, mosquito Okay, nak prevent So all these are some of the application lah Macam mana dia orang uh, gunakan The surface tension uh, In their really life Okay, what are the other, other things that you can do Using surface tension Cuba fikir Okay, cuba fikir So I think all these are uh, Something that you To trigger So that's why I didn't ask something that already in the lecture note I want you to think And you answer the question. Apa lagi? Okay, surface tension selalunya happen in the water. Okay, yang yeah, ni application yang something related dengan water lah. Ada lagi? Can you one? Cuba fikir lah. Cuba fikir. Okay, jiwa ada soalan. Ah, ada ada jawapan. Ya. Ya. Let's say uh, you imagine a scenario. Ha? Huh? You go to a forest. Okay. okay and then you lock you don't know. You get needle you put in water. You put the needle in the water. Okay. And then you can find no. 
how you want to find if you don't have a magnetic is it is it possible you have tried before okay so maybe in order to test that i need to get lost first <laughs> then i will find myself back to the lecture class okay so maybe maybe it's true yeah it's a survival tips from your friend so so kalau is apple you need to thank your friend lah nak apa nama Sufian, ah Sufian, apa yang saya baru baru nampak, ah selalu tengok dari Google Meet, okay, so maybe maybe can 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 try lah, okay, so apa dalam Facebook ada kan five minutes, five five minutes macam ni craft, tapi kena buat satu jam atau pun kena buat setengah hari, tapi nama je five minutes craft kan, so it's maybe it's a survival tip, so if you get lost, tapi you kena bawa jarum lah with you. Ah, tak tak ada jarum macam mana nak cari kan? So silap silap. So you nak buat eksperimen, you already get lost. Tapi then you realise you tak bawa jarum. <laughs> lost forever, <laughs> lost forever. Ah, so maybe uh, it can be applicable. So try to find, try to find in internet what is what are the other application. Okay, yeah, the first thing. Uh, you need to use water, something related dengan water, and also uh, it must be something with the layer on top. Okay, maybe you want to prevent some insect from going in. Uh, so you letak one layer of uh, oil. Uh, selalunya dalam chat. Uh, uh, so uh, dalam, I think maybe something related dengan petrol. Petrol pun ada juga. So you want to prevent something, you don't want to go uh, how to say. Can petroleum uh, petroleum punya plant dalam petroleum plant. So they are one place where they put uh, this kind of layers on top, so that impurities will not go in. Uh, impurities maksudnya benda asing lah. So anything, maybe serang enggak ke ataupun cebisan ke apa apa. So they want to go uh, go inside. So they put a layer on top so that it will prevent something from going in. Okay. So that that's are some of the things lah. Maybe you will find. Okay. But uh, daily life, you let up paper clip is not something impactful for your life. And the serenga. Okay. Serenga. Yeah. Ni pun satu. So real life. So maybe not something that you do. But serenga ni buat. Apa yang serenga ni buat? Uh, dia boleh uh, boleh stand on top of the water and dia boleh makan the lava of the mosquito. Uh, so it really help you the surface tension. Kalau dia tak boleh tak ada surface tension dia akan tenggelam. Uh, then lava yang makan. So the other way. So lava yang makan serangga tu, not serangga makan lava. Uh, so lava you tahu kan? Bukan lava. Bukan maharaja lava. <laughs> So, lawa, the mosquito, mosquito punya egg kan. Okay, so that's the second thing. Okay, third question. It's okay, we take some time. Okay, what are the differences in wetted and non-wetted fluid? Okay, tadi kita tengok wetted. Wetted maksudnya macam water. Okay, A atau B? A. Okay, so A. So, apa kriteria dia? So, ada dua kriteria. I beritahu tadi. Uh, if you want to evaluate between wetted and non-wetted so satu meniscus so you tengok dia melengkung ke atas ataupun melengkung ke bawah ok so kalau water uh, wetted wetted ke non-wetted wetted uh, so wetted dia akan melengkung ke atas so that's the first criteria ok then apa satu lagi the angle ok the angle So, apa yang you buat melengkung ni, you just tarik sikit ke atas, then you take from the surface. So, if it's below 90 degrees, so it's wetted. Kalau yang ni macam ni, uh, dia uh, dia melengkung ke bawah, so you take from this surface. So, it's more than 90 degrees. Kalau more than 90 degrees, it's non-wetted. Okay, so that's the difference lah. Uh, so, it's something related to your lecture. Okay, so fourth question. Based on your understanding uh, So, I punya soalan dalam exam Kebanyakannya ada macam ni Based on your understanding So, it's not 
is not apa uh, solat solat apa kibat dah kibat kan so dulu waktu saya KBKK uh, dia dia akan selalu ubah at, at, at the end kita yang akan lost kan uh, tapi kibat kibat dia selalunya something yang out of the box kan uh, so this question is something like that Okay, uh, in my my exam questions, you can always expect this kind of question. Okay, based on your understanding, based on your opinion. Okay, so you must know something above that what you learn from your lecture note. Okay, so based on your understanding, what we need to do if we want to boil water at room temperature on the mountain. Ah, ini ayat bagi kita tadi. So room temperature berapa? Twenty five, thirty. Okay, let's say thirty. So macam mana you nak boil water? Ha, ini ini yang kawan you bagi ramai answer ni. You just need to eat up. Ha, so that is not technical answer. Eh? Okay. Walaupun yang itu betul. Okay. Well, your answer must be related to thermal fluid. Okay. So this question. Uh, what you can understand from this question. You want to boil the water. At room temperature. Without using anything extra. Without you eating up. Ha, macam mana? Macam mana you nak buat? Vapor pressure. Okay, tadi kita dah belajar. So, it's boiling the water is actually not related to temperature. Ha? Tapi, based on our understanding all this while, I think maybe uh, your, berapa tahun? 18 tahun eh? Okay, 18, 19 years of your life, you believe that temperature is the one who controlling the boiling of the water. Tapi, today we learn something, it's not actually temperature. Tapi you nak explain benda ni payah ha, Tiba-tiba you nak pergi argue dengan your mum It's not it's not temperature Sir say like this Okay then your mum ask Explain Oh Terkapai-kapai ha. So don't, don't be like that So don't argue with So the moral of the story Don't argue with your mum Okay Don't argue with your mum Okay always go along So whatever they say Yes mum okay, You are right Okay always be, always understand that Women are right Uh, women are right Okay So that's why we need to go left uh, Okay so Macam mana? Go back to this question How you want to go back? How you want to answer this question? So macam mana? Kita nak uh, Boil the water Without Raising the temperature At the room temperature Macam mana? Okay kalau you tengok gambar ni Okay, so boiling point of water Everest Everest almost like 8,000 meters Okay, above So katakan you dah daki naik atas Tak tahu nak turun So you need to survive on top Needle pun tak ada <laughs> Needle pun tak ada Don't know how to find way back Okay So you you want to survive You want to You tak bawa alat uh, apa? Uh, Something to eat up You forgot Okay, so how we want to boil the water on top? So kalau you tengok the the boiling point ataupun a boiling point lah in terms of the temperature is 69.9. Maksudnya on top of Everest is not under degrees. Ah, uh, the boil. So you boleh boil at uh, 69.9 degrees. Air itu dah mendidih dah. Okay, uh, and sea level. Sea level is uh, our surface lah. Okay, our surface 100 degrees. Uh, kalau Dead Sea, Dead Sea is actually minus, so below sea level, minus 427. Dead Sea ke mana? Ah, uh, Jordan. Uh, pernah pergi? So Dead Sea, you boleh apung, because the salt level in the water is too high until you tabli tenggelam. Ah. Uh, So density of the water is more than your body. Okay, so that sea is actually negative 427 meter below the sea level. Okay, so below the sea level. So the kasana takat di area, uh, sorry, the boiling point. Okay, boiling point is 101.4. It's increased more. Okay, so maksudnya, if the height is more Uh, the the boiling point will decrease if the height is less the boiling point will increase okay so 
So back to question. How you want to answer this question? Macam mana? So without using any additional assistance, how you want to boil the water on top of the mountain? Yeah? Okay, so the answer I tak apalah, I bagi. So, tapi you fikirlah soalan-soalan macam ni. So, if you want to your bo- the water to be boiled at uh, 30 degrees Celsius. Tapi on top of mountain berapa? I think maybe on top of uh, Genting Islands maybe 15, 14 degrees. Okay, ataupun 10 degrees. Okay. So, kalau you nak air tu mendidih at 10 degrees Celsius, what you need to do? You need to put the water in a container and you try to reduce the pressure to vapor pressure. Faham tak? Ah, so that's the thing that you can do lah. Yeah. Just a genuine question, sir. How, yeah. how would you do that? So you need to bring, you need to bring something lah. Uh, you need to bring something because the the idea is you are not adding any heat to it. Uh, instead of you controlling the heat, you control the pressure. Faham tak? Ah, uh, so you control the pressure because actually yang yang main thing behind the scene. It's the pressure, bukan the temperature. Ah, uh, faham tak? So that's the thing that I want to understand. Ada soalan? So far ada soalan tak? Huh? So I think you boleh understand lah. Kalau you tak boleh faham tu, I bagi recording nanti. So you try to listen. Okay, so number five. Based on your understanding, what will happen at very low pressure and at very high pressure in a flowing fluid? Okay, so yang ni pun go back to whatever I explained earlier, something related. Okay, apa yang akan jadi at very low pressure? Yang ni for moving fluid. Okay, something yang moving. Okay, so liquid yang moving. So what will happen at the high pressure and what will happen at the very low pressure? Uh, ada, yang ni rasanya ada dalam lecture note. Okay, kalau very low pressure. Okay, tak apalah, saya bagi. So since I think 10 minutes dah, dah lepas So we need to enter to chapter 3 Eh so chapter 2 Chapter 3 kan hari ni uh, Okay so At very low pressure What will happen? Ada dalam lecture note Cari cari word tu Ada dua word yang I bagi tahu tadi So what will happen? At very low pressure In a moving fluid Cavitation Cavitation So cavitation, tadi saya tengok kan Dia macam akan rosakkan the propeller uh, Because at very low pressure uh, Dia akan Suppose fluid ni Dia akan bergerak dari High pressure to low pressure Dia Tiba-tiba high pressure suddenly drop in pressure uh, Then your The cavitation will happen lah Okay, so that's what So you, that's why you need to Berapa berapa ramai yang pernah naik kapal terbang? Tapi ramai kan? Ha. So kalau you naik kapal terbang So what will happen If the pilot suddenly drop the plane? Ha. So you nak muntah uh, Suddenly you feel like pening It's because of sudden drop in pressure ha. Dari low pressure Terus turun ke high pressure Uh, sebab kat atas ni low pressure uh, Kat atas uh, Atas the, the particular Thousand feet above kan Low pressure Tiba-tiba turun dia jadi high pressure uh, So what will happen Your body cannot take uh, So pilot tu akan buat apa uh, Dia akan pergi pusing Slowly, slowly, slowly Baru akan turun So that you won't feel uh, The pressure change Okay, similar lah dekat sini so, so, water is moving at one particular pressure Dia bergerak at one particular speed Suddenly drop in pressure uh, So, what will happen? Kalau sudden drop uh, to a lower pressure Cavitation will happen So, ca- suddenly increase So, water is uh, moving Suddenly you stop or, or you suddenly increase Water emmer will happen Tadi kita tengok kan, water emmer Yang, yang uh, kerosakan So that's the two types of uh, Damages that will happen uh, In the fluid flowing Okay one is cavitation Satu lagi adalah water emmer 
Okay, so the last question When the value of E is higher Is it highly compressible or less compressible? Ah, yes. uh, Less, yang ni soalan yang sedang lah uh, Kalau tadi kita tengok 10 to power of 9 Meaning the E is bigger So when the E is bigger It's less compressible Okay So I think that's about for our discussion today So any question before we take 5? Okay, so we take five. Um, kita akan start uh, the next lecture at 9.20. Okay, so uh, based on the timetable that I gave, today I can cover as much as possible. The remaining I can cover on Friday. Friday morning dalam Google Meet. So kita takkan meet dekat sini. Okay? Okay, take five.